I'm comedian Timmy Boyle, and this is the greatest live Instagram comedy experience that nobody knew about. March of 2020, I just arrived home from tour when COVID-19 shut down the world. So despite being severely technically challenged, I started a daily live Instagram show right here from my living room. Because how hard could it be? And how long could a pandemic last? Apparently longer than five months. So now, a hundred episodes later, I've called comedians as diverse in experience as they are in style from all around the world to discuss comedy, life, and, well, whatever. I had no goals, which was a great idea. I avoided tech checks, which was a bad idea. And I eventually wore no pants. The jury's still out on that one. And my OJ, over 150 days, transformed from refreshing drink to rancid mystery liquid right before our eyes. It was a random, free-flowing, hilariously messy ride into the minds and backstage lives of entertainers where anything could happen, and did, including a trip to a goat farm. Overcoming a lack of direction, resources, and tech ineptness, as well as multiple zombie cyber attacks, a project not expected to last even a week soon developed into a must-watch show like no other. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself, right here, on another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Is that it? Did we get it all? Awesome. Oh, man. Well, Seven o'clock once again, and uh, boy, that was a little bit of a rush. Uh, welcome to those that are coming in right away here. Um, I don't know if it's just because you were sitting around doing nothing and you were like, oh, hey, Timmy's going live, or if you're just kind of like, um, we got this on our calendar and we got a notification a half hour, half hour ago saying, no, we're going to we gotta be ready for Timmy's live show um, at seven o'clock, but you guys are getting in here pretty quickly. Hello to all of you. Even I knew this was coming because for the last uh, 17 days, this is show 18 of Calling Comedians in Quarantine, um, it's been the same thing, 7 o'clock at night, and uh, well, I can say honestly, uh, it was two minutes ago, and my son um, was watching me eat a taco, and he said, uh, don't you go live uh, in a couple minutes? And I said, uh, yeah, actually, oh, right. And I looked over, and sure enough, um, my stove clock said it was 7.59. My phone said 7.58, and I was still trying to get a, a taco down. And then I was like, oh, you know, I got taco in my teeth. So I ran to the bathroom and quickly brushed my teeth. And... Um, and then, uh, then I was like, I don't even have a drink. And I, I, grabbed, my, I grabbed my orange juice quickly um, on my way here. And I put the phone down. And currently, at this very moment, I still need to go to the bathroom. I literally, after 17 days of doing this show every day at 7 p.m., I, um, I still uh, got snuck up on today. And I was like, oh, the show is going to be starting. Anyways... Well, thank you for those who are coming in. Uh, we have uh, some regulars that I can tell on here, some um, some new people that I don't think have been uh, have, have come in to see the show before. Uh, let's just start it off by saying my name is Timmy Boyle from Upstanding Comedy, and you are currently watching Calling Comedians in Quarantine. It's episode 18. Uh, last night was our Q&A time with Timmy, as is the Friday night episodes. I have some great questions about comedy and life and quarantine. Um, and tonight we have Paul May, who is going to be coming in here in a minute. I'll be calling Paul May. And uh, like I said, hold on, I'm just, I'm just trying to get myself caught up here. I know Paul is already in the house, and so you can all say hi to Paul, because I know he's here, and uh, I'll be connecting with him in a couple minutes. But literally, bad idea to uh, try to wolf down uh, two tacos um, right before doing this show, literally right before, the, like I have to go to the bathroom so bad. So this might be, um, this might be kind of like a four minute show. 
um, unless Paul, um, unless Paul just wants to kill time. But let's uh, let's let's bring uh, Paul May in here. Megan Dunlop, hello. Uh, Jenny Rump is in here. Crystal's Punny's here. Um, I think we saw. Let's see who else is in here. Let's just do a shout out here. Uh, I, I like people's names, even though I know your real names on some of these people. But like Rum Paul One and Joy Janat and Brown Girl in the Plain and LeBrand, LeBrandon Marie, who we found out it's not a couple's account. It's LeBrandon and Marie, but or not Anne Marie. That's a whole different name. But LeBrandon Marie, that's a first name, last name. His wife's name is not even Marie. I thought it was a couple thing, but anyways, mine's mine's the real Timmy Boyle. That's just one person. Nice and clear. Anyways, uh, welcome for everybody who is in the sh in uh, watching right now. Uh, Paul May Comedy is saying, always saying hi to Crystal. So Paul May is here, but let's bring him into the show here. Episode 18 of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. We're going to bring in Paul May right now. Let me introduce you to Paul May. There he is. Hey, hey, hey. Paul hey, May. Hey, got through uh, using the bathroom, so I'm good to go. How are you? You've you've already used the bathroom? Yeah, I'm good to go, man. Yeah, I'm ready to go for a while. I I literally um, I I should have thought about this. I had all day to know this was coming. I've had two and a half weeks of knowing this is this was about to happen, and I and I and I did not go to the bathroom before the show. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how much time you can fill while I while I run off. Like, is that something doable? But it, it depends. Are you? Is it number one or number two? How long would that? I need to know how much material I need to prepare for. You know, how many? How many minutes? Uh, I, I let's say, let's say thirty seconds. Yeah. No, let's say forty, forty-five seconds. Yeah, man, I've got you, bro. I've got you. You need to go. I have, I've never left. But we've said, we've said right from the beginning, anything can happen. We've had a tour of of Nashville. We've had a tour of a goat farm, uh, but I've never <laughs> left this chair to go to the bathroom. Right. But I got I got to go. You, you got 40, 45 seconds. You have a, t a stopwatch? I've got you, man. Right here. It's right there. Okay. Here. No, that, that doesn't count, Paul. That doesn't count. I need legit what? time here. Come oh, on. Shit. Yeah. I have nothing in front of me, man. You're, you, you, have to, you have to create your own stopwatch. When you're back, you're back. Okay, here we go. I'm watching my, my, my good old analog. It's counting down. 45 seconds, I'll be back. I've never had to do this before, but I gotta go to the bathroom. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Is that washing the hands included in that? Because we are under quarantine. One, go, here we go. go. So, hey guys, uh, good to be with you. My name is Paul May. I am from Springfield, Missouri. I am a uh, full-time comedian. Been doing the comedy thing now, five years uh, full time. I uh, met Timmy a couple years ago at the CCA, had a good time with him, and then actually got to spend some time with him in Canada uh, during the date night comedy tour, which was a lot of fun. Um, we did um, a lot of dates and a lot of cold temperature. And uh, so, yeah, so Springfield, Missouri, we're currently quarantined, so all of our shows that we would normally have on the road. Is currently not happening right now because, as you guys know, of this pandemic that's going on. So hopefully, us stir crazy comedians can uh, be able to have time to. Hey, Tim! Oh, yeah, nailed yeah. it! Yeah. That's, uh, Welcome back. That's uh, that's that's water from the uh, that's yeah, water yeah. from right. yeah, water from the sink. But that was literally forty five seconds on the dot. Hey, um, I don't know anything that you said there. Um, so. I Kind of giving an intro of who I am, where I'm from, and all that kind of good stuff. I just took care of all the formalities. Okay, cool, beautiful. Um, so uh, those who are all coming in right now, um, just for the record, my name is Timmy Boyle. I'm up here on top, unless your phone is upside down. That's Paul May down there on the bottom. And uh, you are watching episode 18 of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. So Paul May, um, wait, now you, were you just stretching or something? What, uh, you just all of a sudden got up and now start moving around? No, I, I set my phone down, so I, I felt like I was pretty much licking the camera, so I chewed back a little bit. Oh, that's okay. Last night we had, uh, or a couple nights ago, we had Joby Sad on, and he was driving at the time. So this was our view of Joby Sad for most of it. He's got he's got beautiful eyes, by the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever looked into Joby's eyes before, but no. Is there a, is there a comedian that you have worked with that um, when you met them in the green room, you were just like, oh, those eyes are amazing. Those eyes are amazing. I would have to say Andy Beningos. His eyes, he just, uh, 
He just had those eyes. He's just got those. He's got that little teddy bear look to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. And then just his eyes just complement that teddy bear, and he's just that little gentle, gentle creature, you know, uh, funny on stage but gentle off stage. We had him on the show, um, I guess, uh, about a week ago now, and and you're right. I mean, I just I like. And he's one of the few comedians that I just I just wanted to just hug the whole time in the green room, like just yeah. just wrap your arms around him. I just want to coddle him, you know, and say, "Hey, do you need anything? We're here for you, buddy." You know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he he would be a great uh, with the toilet paper, the charmin, the softness, the gentleness. I think he would be a good spokesman for toilet paper. Interesting. That yeah, there's always questions like that that have always kind of uh, uh, made me very interested. Oh, by the way, um, my mom just popped in here, so just uh, keep it clean. I was mom. Um, you know, you know, you always have those questions of like, you know, if you were a fire truck, you know, or if you were a truck, what kind of fire truck would you be? Those type of questions. Sure. You know, I think Andy would be that thing of like, if you were a household product what would you be and you're i think you're right he could be you'd be toilet paper just like 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 four ply like four ply at high end. at least at least yeah. yeah that's so cool hey um uh aside from that uh what uh what would be the um top three things that make a good comedian we know eyes good eyes are are the first thing you need right. to have great eyes like i've got i have beautiful eyes i mean i've got i've got i do have some bags that yeah. are starting to come in. I can't but tell if you, camper, do you have blue eyes? Are those blue? They're kind of blue? Uh, they're, a, they're a hazel. Um, I, I, my mom used to tell, my mom's on here right now, and she would say stuff ever growing up saying, oh, you got hazel eyes. Like, literally, like, I, I now, after, like, multiple decades, have never been able to find out whether or not that's a genuine color. I think my mom literally right. made it up to sound me unique or something, make me sound unique. I think right? she's talking about your great-grandma hazel. You got hazel's eyes. She was talking about. Uh, she actually yeah. had one fake eye, so maybe I have one of her eyes. Absolutely. I've never checked. Um, and uh, so, okay, so what would you say makes a great comic? What are what? But you but you can't list a whole list. Like we're talking sure. good eyes, and then two other things that you think are necessary for a great comic. Obviously, great original material would be one, and a great stage presence would be the other. And I have in neither. that order, and I have neither. So yeah, so that's that's a great comedian. That's those are what's making the big bucks. And then there's others that we're trying to figure out how to how to have both of those, or at least one of those qualities. Now, of course, um, so Jenny Rump says uh, a sense of humor. So that's that's clearly that's clearly a component. Sure. Um, which actually might come before good original content, because I would think that. Um, if you don't have a sense of humor and an ability to see funny and everything around you, you actually probably don't have any content. Absolutely. Yeah. You definitely, uh, as a comedian, you have to be a very keen observer of things and see things differently than what the common person would observe in, in the moment. And, you know, it may not come just right then, but as you think about it and you think about a certain object or something that you see or something that has taken place, you kind of wrap your head around, you know, from a different lens or a different perspective to bring that humor that would, in, in uh, most people's eyes, just be something common to bring something that's going to be humor and relatable that's like in light of some way that somebody's never seen before. Hmm. Hey, do me a favor and sit on the other side of your camera because the words are all over your face on this side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you do have nice eyes. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I have to have these eyes now to be able to see small things on my phone. So. Hey, that is the um, uh, that's the unteachable component, though, is what you're talking about. I don't think I think there's something within human beings that really sets the table for being a comic or not being a comic, because I don't think you can learn to see life through the lens that comics see. Like, like I'll find something funny in, day, in a day-to-day -day journey. Like, it could be as simple as walking by a store, seeing a, a sign that has just something quirky about it. And I'll be, like, cracking up, trying to figure out how I'm going to say that in my next show. And then I'll be with somebody who's like, I, I didn't even notice. Like, how did you see that? And I think, I don't, th I don't even think you can teach that ability. No, I, I, I don't think so either. I think, um, you know, there's a lot... Even people that aren't stand-up comedians, but I, I have a lot of very comedic friends that, you know, they're afraid of the stage. They're afraid to, you know, 
I'm being a limelight. But they'll see things or say things that I'm just rolling and busting because uh, of just that like-minded humor. You know? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of us, you know, we all have friends like that. You know, somebody that could just be the life of the party because of the things and the things that they say and observe in those yeah. moments. Not just, not just slapstick humor, but just good uh, intellectual humor that takes place. And then those, those, some of those people, those, those house party friends, um, then there's that block, though. There's that extra step, right? Then you try to put them on a stage outside of the right. living room circle, and they can't do it. They're, they're, but, basically, they're basically your comedy writers for a sitcom. They're not, they're not in front of the camera. They're behind the right. camera. Yeah. yeah. What, um, just because you brought up sitcoms, I'm a sitcom kid. Um, and I, I assume I, I'm, I'm assuming we're, we're kind of relatively the same generational wise. Um, what was uh, uh, what was your favorite sitcom growing up? Um, OK, which which decade are you referring to? Like which which like as whatever. Kid or? What, yeah, whatever. Whatever you growing up meant, whatever. Like maybe you didn't grow up until you were in your 30s, whatever you wanted to find growing <laughs> up as. I still haven't grown up. <laughs> OK. So, so let's just say, what was your favorite sitcom between the age of wearing diapers to now? Well, then again, maybe you're wearing diapers now. I don't want to get into the whole, you know, I don't want to give yeah. too much information that's, away. That's, that's but a personal. So, yeah. So, what what would be what would be a sitcom that you really enjoyed? Well, it's not necessarily a sitcom, but it's a cartoon in a sitcom. But The Simpsons was. And, and it's multi generation. I mean, I, I just I think it's still I haven't kept up with it, but growing up as a kid and you know being you know watching the Saturday morning cartoons and whenever Simpsons came, that was like a whole different genre because it it touched based on the current issues of of that day of that era. And so you could go back, you know, even thirty years from that, you know, uh, from now, and, and uh, look at their beginnings and just kind of see what was going on politically, culturally, you know, socially in that era. And see the Simpsons make fun of it in certain situations and stuff, and uh, and that, that's something you know I think that's why it's had its longevity is because they've been able to kind of uh, take humor from the moments. It could have been a crisis at that time. It could have been just uh, you know you know two presidents running against each other, but they've been able to find humor uh, just through a, a cartoon in the characters and and uh, just do obser observation humor of what they've seen in their news media. Um, I think you can also see that uh, that they also talk about what's happening in the future. Have you seen all the things that show that the Simpsons actually not only talk about what's happening now, but they talk about what's going to happen? They, they predict President Trump getting president, and that was like years ago. There's like a picture of like Donald Trump, like with a, with like a Saudi prince and some other dude around like this what looked like a mystical ball or whatever. And that picture was actually in the newspaper, like when he became president. You're like, what? And that was like drawn. You right. down. Yeah, they have. They. That's not just like. like quite they, frankly, if if you look at the old art uh -huh. and to see where they came from stylistically, you yeah. know there's alien influence in that. Like that technology doesn't just develop. Exactly. So they they're they they're, they're, they're time travelers as well. Yeah. Um, we got some people throwing in uh, married with children. Um, I assume there's a, a spelling error there. I didn't remember watching married with. I didn't really like me watching that because I was a kid whenever that came out and everything. And that was a little bit too risque for for my <clears throat> guys at that time. I was uh, I was a super big fan of uh, Christina Applegate on that one. Um, the Big Bang Theory. Um, but yeah. did you ever you would you watch the Big Bang? That, I can. I cannot believe that that show lasted 10 years. Yeah. No offense, Joy, but the first two years I thought was super cool, very unique, funny, and then um, eight years of, of formula. We were talking, do you know Joel Madison at all? I do not. Joel Madison um, was one of the writers on Roseanne, and uh, he was on our show uh, last Saturday, and he was talking about how every, every show on TV now follows this formula. Right. And the good shows, uh, we were talking about that you forget that there's a formula. Same with a comic. Like you go on the stage, if a, a good comic will make people think that they're literally telling these stories for the very first time. And yet we're all following things like set up, punch, tag, those type of, of formulas. So I saw like a show like The Big Bang Theory, for me, 
um, the first couple of years, you didn't even notice the formula and then it just became formula and no, no knock. I mean, every right. to each their own. But. Uh, our impulse is all in the family. That was a great show, Archie Bunker. And, uh, and that was a very, um, in today's culture, man, uh, especially with how everybody gets offended these days and stuff. I don't know if that show would be able to, to make, I know they've done a remake with the Woody Harrelson. I haven't seen, have you seen any oh, really? action with that? No, I, ha I haven't. Um, but all in the family, I mean, that, what made that so good was because even though it wouldn't be done, it was ahead of its time then, too. The stuff that Archie Bunker was allowed to say on that show um, really wasn't acceptable in any time. And yet, yet people gravitated <laughs> towards that character. Yeah. Um, and it just it, it was a testament to good writing because people have asked, you know, like, what's off limits for comedy? I don't think anything is off limits. So the question yeah. is, how do you present it? Right. And that all in the family was able to hit these issues, these deep societal issues, in fact, um, that uh, that were happening across America. Um, but they did it in such a way that everybody was able to to embrace it as opposed to um, going, you know, who's this, you know, yeah. kind of. You know, but and we got Elf thrown in here, too. <laughs> oh. Elf. Elf. Yeah, for me, too, um, you know. I gravitated towards this comedy because it was situa it was situational comedy. But like when a stand-up comedian, uh, whenever they resonate with an audience, and we tell a certain joke, maybe it could be a story form joke or something that has happened and it becomes relatable that other people can identify with. To me, right. the sitcom for me, because of my wife, I've been married now for, for 25 years, but just the, the personality in, uh, of, of the two characters was Everybody Loves Raymond. And yeah. so, so for me, I, I really enjoyed that show because of the banter and back and forth between the husband and wife, because there's a lot of situations that happen in that show that my wife would just, as we're watching together, give me the elbows, like, uh-huh, see, see, you know, you're just sitting there laughing because you relate to it so much. Uh, Three's Company has been thrown out here. Mary Jane Baker is saying to remake a Three's Company. I mean, you want to talk about great, great, um, I mean, that's a great sitcom in general, but, yeah. but um, John Ritter uh, oh, yeah. um, is a, I think he's, I, he might very well be uh, an underrated. I know there's a lot of people that appreciate John Ritter and he died yeah. way, way too early, but um, that, that is a, a severely, I think in general, underrated comedic force. Uh, this, the, you know, his physical comedy was right up there with, you know, Tim Conway, Chevy Chase, any, any, all of those guys. Oh, yeah. um, he could do a fall over a couch. Uh, as good uh, or better than uh, than almost anybody. Yeah, yeah. What the uh, Carol Burnett show, man? That was we Tim Conway, the Carol Burnett show, doing... hands down one of the funniest uh, shows I got to watch because it was just funny watching the you know Tim Conway's whole thing was to try to get his his other uh, characters in the, in the thing to to break. You yeah, know, that, that was his motive every time, and and it just and he, so and he did it when those characters did break. Those are some of the best episodes. Um, so how about on stage? So that worked really well in, in that show. And in fact, some of the greatest episodes in the Carol Burnett show um, was um, when the cast caused another person to crack up. How do you feel about stand-up comics who laugh at their own jokes or create that sense of, you know, where, where they break their character? How do, you, how do you feel about that on live, live on stage? I'm not a fan of that because to me that's not authentic. Because to, you know, whenever somebody's breaking character in a sketch comedy and they're actually breaking because of uh, what was said by that person and they can't right. get that composure, that's humor. But if you're like, you know, you're telling a joke and like, <laughs> and you get try to get back to it and and finish it, you're you're kind of baiting the audience. And to me, I mean, that, that's kind of manufactured in a sense and not not authentic. And I know a lot of people do it, and that's fine. But I, I would yeah. rather just catch them on on the on the misdirection, uh, you know, that random humor or, or the improv of a moment whenever you're crowd working with somebody and having that authentic, right. you know, type of humor. Because there are certain things I will laugh authentically that maybe somebody said if I'm doing crowd work and I have to interview about something, they then they yeah. get response. I'll laugh, and because I laughed, the audience reacted to that because it was an authentic moment and i think the audience picked up on that as well but if you're telling a joke for the 11th teeth billionth time and you're still laughing at that dude come on <laughs> who um who inspired you as a comic 
I mean, you, you, you were, I think you're, you're, you've been doing full-time comedy for five years, but you've been entertaining for yeah. a long time. But sure. who's your, who's yeah. your, yeah. who was your inspiration? Uh, yes, yeah, so I would say stand-up wasn't really on my radar, until, obviously, until about six, seven years ago. And I did sketch comedy before that. So I had a drama production team from college that we traveled around and, and I did that. And so I always enjoyed, because of that, watching the old, the old SNL sketches and stuff, Saturday Night Live, uh, a lot of comedians that came out of that because, you know, like your Eddie Murphy's, your Dana Carvey's, and I do a lot with impressions. So I always enjoyed, you know, mm -hmm. anytime Dana did an impression on his, on a Saturday Night Live, whether it be a president or certain, you know, celebrities and stuff like that. Uh, but today, uh, as far as like comedians, I've always really liked and watched was a lot of early uh, Brian Regan stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian Regan's one of my guys. Uh, Jim Brewer is another um, that just, I, I, I don't know if we've got just similar styles in a sense, but I, I gravitate to them because, one, it, their joke may not necessarily be a misdirection, but how they tell the story of, of, of what they're describing, it, mm -hmm. it, it's just hysterical to me. And so th those are two guys that, that I really like at this current juncture. Uh, what, uh, out of the impressions that you do, um, what's your favorite one? Well, I don't necessarily have a favorite. I just get one, a lot of requests. Like, when I used to do the sketch comedy, a lot of teenage audiences and stuff. And so we do these youth camps, and I would be there. We'd do the sketch, and I'd do, like, an impression. And all week long, hey, hey, do Elmo. Hey, can you do Elmo again? So, oh, here, Elmo again. So, you know, a lot of those characters, those ones I kind of do well, but they're not necessarily my favorite. Um, but I, I don't do a lot of, like, celebrity people. Mine are, is more the cartoon-based impressions from, you know, uh, Mickey Mouse, Scooby-Doo, uh, Yogi Bear, all that. Those are celebrities, though. Those, those sure. are those are celebrities. I count them. I mean, Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt and Elmo are are across the board just as pop just as pop culturally so. known. So, I see no <laughs> distinction there. I would have to agree. So you've got a few people that are throwing out um, uh, some Elmo stuff. Can you do Can you do some Elmo for us tonight? We got a couple of people talking about Elmo on the on the chat uh, here. Typical. I knew it happened. All right. Um, let's see. I didn't mean to do it, but you know now somebody else right. brings it. Original Moondog asked. Who brought it up? Oh, yeah, Robert, uh, before I do Elmo, Brian Regan, the emergency room, that is the gold one. That's, that's one of the classics. That's why I say the early Brian Regan stuff, that whole stand-up uh, show from that time, the emergency room and the girth and all that kind of stuff, that's one of my favorite uh, uh, stand-ups he's done. Oh, oh right. wait, here. Um, do you, um, before you do Elmo, uh, do you know um, the movie Ocean's Eleven? Yes. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And do you know any of the lines from Ocean Eleven? Oh man, it's been years since I've seen that. So no. I've seen that, so no. Huh. Okay. Um, say this. Do an Elmo. Okay. I don't even know if this is a real. Wait. 
I don't even know if this is a real line. Wait. Okay, do something to Elmo, and then I, I'm going to look up something in particular here on this other phone. Do something that you that I'll you do would do with Elmo. I'll do a Clint Eastwood line. Oh, okay. You ready? Yep. Elmo just want to say, do you feel lucky, Puck? Well, do you? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Elmo, love you. So, <laughs> how, like... Literally anything that you say in Elmo's voice can be funny, right? Sure, yeah. It, it's it's so funny. What what I would really love to do, but I I because of my morality and beliefs and stuff, I don't I don't I don't use language in my in my stand up and stuff. But I've been doing these TikTok videos, and I, I'm getting some comments from people seeing them and everything. But I just want Elmo just to go all gangster one time and just. TikTok and and he's just disgruntled and and all of a sudden all these like adjectives and derogatory statements just come out of Elmo's voice. I want to do that so <laughs> bad. I, I just can't do that. I got I got to keep it PG or PG thirteen. So. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if this will work. I'm gonna, you tell me whether or not whether or not you can can you can you read that? Um, no. It's. It, no. When it gets closer, it blurs up. Darn it. I wanted you to do a, a quote from Ocean's Eleven as Brad Pitt's character as Elmo. That would bring together two of my, two uh, of my love. I'm trying to do, yeah. But, that, but that's okay. This technology yeah. won't do it. Now, that's fun okay. Fact, fun fact, speaking of Brad Pitt, I live here in Springfield, Missouri, which is the hometown of legendary Brad Pitt. Really? Really is. Yeah, my kids... Yeah. Uh, my kids go to the high school we went to, and all the, his parents still live here in town. So wait, is the there is, coming in? It's not uncommon for people to spot him in the mall or something. Who is the non-legendary Brad Pitt? Oh, the non-legendary Brad Pitt. That's a good question. Um, that would be uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, you now, you now, uh, you you do professional stand up. You tour across North America. You've even been up here in Canada. We had you up here on on date night. I did a show with you um, in St. Catharines. I think we did a taping there. Mm -hmm. um, how many times have you been up here in Canada? That was my first tour in Canada. So January was my uh, my first guest. I'm having to do this because I'm getting text messages. I'm having to swipe up because <laughs> the screen is leaving you. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, January is my first time in Canada, so that was a really cool experience. L literally cool experience because it was very cold there. So I think then it was, and you were here for, you were here in through, through February, right? Yeah, part, part of February. I basically had about uh, three days off after I left uh, Canada, and then I went to Provo, Utah and shot my dry bar special. So soon after you left, all of a sudden, this COVID-19 thing starts unleashing itself on our nation. Do you, do you think there's any coincidence? I think if there is a coincidence, it's all Joey Aiello's fault because he hmm. was very sick before he went to Canada. And then I wound up touring with him for a few dates and then rooming with him. And then while I was in Canada... And we're going to blame me walking outside in the cold for about a mile to a mall just so we can get some food. But mm. while I was in Canada, I came down with a cough and sickness for about me. And uh, uh, Eric Spath, the, uh, the, the director, I think he can attest that I was, I was pretty much uh, hacking lungs. And, 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 and uh, so they were giving me all these remedies and stuff. And basically the next day I was good. But uh, – I don't think that's COVID related. Just for the record, people, we, me and Joey did not start this pandemic. So, so, so you guys were not patients zero? No, no. We, we didn't. Okay. And I didn't have a lot of patience to begin with, so. No, no, I noticed that on the, on the one show I did with you. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty intense. Well, you, you got to do, man. I just, you know, sometimes I just get in the zone. Yeah, I can't help it. You, um. We're going to be closing up fairly soon here. We try not to keep anybody too long because we know everybody's so busy um, through the quarantine season. Um, but uh, you married? You have kids? I am married. I got two kids. Uh, my wife and I, we actually, the funny thing is, um, you know, we just celebrated our 25-year anniversary here in March, which 
Originally, our plan was to go to Cancun. We wound up not scheduling it in March. We were going to try to do it at a different time. But our uh, our anniversary of 25 years uh, has been spent at house at home. So, and uh, so that's uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to have a makeup date if you know what I mean. So, and then yeah, I got two. So bulls. does it do does it kind of feel like does it kind of feel now that maybe you're celebrating your 30th now? Like how like how how has this one month felt? Has it been a five years kind and of added to your marriage? Honest, if I'm quarantined much longer, my wife is not going to let me celebrate our 30th. If that if you know what I mean. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once a comedian, always a comedian. So she's my captive audience at this moment. So my outlet literally has been social media or TikTok videos or something just to try to buy my time and be out of her hair for a while. And she's kind of, actually kind of joined in a few videos with me, so that's been a lot of fun. And then I got you're, two you're, teenage boys, 17 and 13. Do they like your comedy? Yeah, actually they do. And that's how uh, I never uh, – if, if I'm going to have – if I have a new bit that I want to try out on on stage and everything – I never, I never go to my wife and tell that bit to her because her, her always response is an eye roll. But if I tell, right. if I tell something to my boys and I get a genuine laugh for them, like, dude, I know I've got a good bit because they'll, they'll, they'll be, t they'll, they'll tell me if not, okay, okay, you know, okay, boomer, don't go with that one, you know, but they'll, they'll let me know if something's good or not. And so I, they're kind of my, they're kind of my gauge before I kind of try it out on stage. I actually have a few people in my life that um, I kind of go the opposite with because I enjoy kind of the quirky off the wall, kind of dry humor. And so uh, I've got a few people in my life that if I tell them a joke and they just go, I don't get it. I'm like, that is gold. I am taking that to the stage. Like, like if, if they don't respond, that's when I, I know I've got something. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Uh, how are you surviving quarantine in general? What uh, what do you, what is the, um, the the May family do when you're stuck um, indoors with each other? So, as you say, literally just this last week, I finally and people have been telling me to try to do it all the time. Like you should just you know make little videos. And of course, Facebook's a good platform, Instagram. But I finally just this week downloaded TikTok. And uh, nice. And, and for me, growing up doing sketch comedy and stuff like that, it's kind of a, a fun outlet because I can, you know, think of something and like, oh, that'd be a fun little TikTok video. And it's probably stupid and moronic and stuff, but it's just, it's, it's been my outlet just to kind of make my, instead of just watching TV all the time or mowing the yard or m wife making me do housework or like that, I'll, I'll try to make some TikTok videos to, to pass the time. And of course, we've been playing board games with the kids and chess and all that kind of fun stuff. What, uh, so where can people find your TikTok? What's it under, Paul May Comedy? Yeah, just Paul May Comedy. So any of the social medias, I've got uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and now TikTok. Just type in Paul May Comedy. It should pop up for you and take a like or follow, whatever it has you to do. So I think today, today or, the, or the one that I just saw recently, I don't know if it was today's, but uh, it's got a, you got like light bulbs sticking up your nose doing, doing a oh, song. Yeah. Like that, Actually, that's they're, super impressive. They're literally sitting right here right now. These are... They they went up they went right up your when nose. Turn the lights off. It really bright. Yeah. You probably see that right there, huh? So yeah, yeah. There's a little song called Dueling Banjos, and I played the part of the banjo. But it wait, so that one there, right? Yeah, yeah. I need to give these back to my wife. She uses these. I don't know. So. All right, cool. Well, Paul, I want to thank you for being on the show tonight um, and just kind of talking a little bit about life and comedy. And uh, it was a pleasure getting a chance to meet you when you were up here in Canada. And hopefully uh, when, when this whole thing kind of blows over, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the 400 day range um, when this thing kind of comes to an end. Some people are saying shorter, but um, as long as we haven't been eaten by zombies along the way, I hope we can uh, kind of connect once, uh, once the stages back open up again. Right, absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, man, I I hope it's less than even four hundred days, man. I don't know how long I can stay in this. Um, do you have, have you seen zombies where you live? Um, Walmart. Hmm. They like they like to stay there. I saw those way before the pandemic. They've always kind of been traipsing around in there. They come they come in all shapes and sizes there. Those they do. It's do. tricky. Um, can I, can I leave with you one piece of advice that I try to leave with all of my guests? Uh, the, when I'm stuck here in my home, um, I just, I want to number one, provide the gift of laughter. I try to do that with, with content. I also want to give people just a look into the offstage lives of, of comics, but I also feel 
that I have to spread my message and let people know how to be safe when the, the zombie apocalypse does uh, completely unleash itself. And if you could yeah. just pass on to the people in your neighborhood and your kids in particular, yeah. I'm gonna that, write that. Uh, that zombies, um, they'll offer you things for your brain and um, very few things are worth your brain. And so if you could just tell, tell everybody um, to just say no to zombies. No, um, no. Just say no. And because, because Paul, this is important. Your brain, it's uh -huh. for thinking, not, it's not for eating, right? So it's just very important. Yeah, that people know the brain. Okay, what? Well, okay, good. if you could pass that on, that would be that. Would, it's just it's a way for me to feel that that I you know it's the only way I can get my message out. I can't I can't you know go on stage in front of a million people, but I can if I can just help the world one comedian at a time, passing that on to their sure. family and their neighborhood. Um, I think we can all survive uh, the what's happening out there. Right. Absolutely. That's great advice, Tim. I'm, I'm glad you shared that with me. You're welcome. Uh, what's this here? I love the Star Wars characters missing TP. Look for Chewie. Is that is that a video you did? That was another. That was another TikTok. They're watching my TikTok videos. What the score? Nice. Yeah. That. that and, oh, honestly, guys, um, likes when you hit like and share on a on a comedian's video and everything, that is our equivalent of getting a laugh on stage. Uh, you know we. We, us as comedians, man, we need that feedback. We need that love and attention. That's why we stand up on stage and tell jokes because we're attention seekers. So whenever we post videos, we just remember we spent time creating and and formatting those bits and those those videos for your enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So whenever you hit like and love, that's that's like a laugh coming our way that that fuels us up as we uh, continue to make more for you. That is an excellent point, and I think I'm going to somehow express this across the board, because um, in a show, if, if you were just sitting there like this watching a comic, like most people, unless that's their genuine form of relaxation, would never do that. They, they would feel that somehow they, like, like that, they know that that laughter is important, and they come to the show to laugh. So if they come on our thing and they just watch our video or watch our photo, or look at our photo or whatever, and then move on, they essentially just have done this in the crowd. And we need, yeah. like you said, it's the only way we know that they're laughing is to actually click a button. So thank you for totally. that. So all of you need to go to see Paul May comedy um, and you need to go and laugh at everything. Even if you don't find it funny, look, even if you don't find it funny, like you said, it's, it's, we I have nothing left. Funny. Oh, yeah. What, what do we have left? We're stuck in our living rooms, Paul. Like just give us something, right? Yeah. Something. Like, just like, let let us feel that we've 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 done something. Even if you don't like it, just click on it. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Someone's gonna say, "Oh, you like that," and just say, "I didn't like it. I just wanted yeah, him it, to feel good." Yeah, you was actually trying to give the angry face, and you accidentally hit like or the smiley thing. We understand, but it, yeah. it all works either way. Or they become they become like a, a good citizen hero because people are just like, "Oh, that was nice of you, man." That even though you didn't like it, you did that to help somebody else. Everybody. So needs it's, it's really needs no. Heard in, in their life, yeah. Yeah, nobody gets nobody gets hurt in this. Yeah. So, so do that, Paul. Um, I hope you and your family stay well. Let's stay in touch along the way here. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being here on Calling Comedians in Good Quarantine. Uh, everybody, go follow Paul May Comedy on all the social media platforms. You're gonna have a great time there, Paul. You have a good one, eh? We'll talk to you soon. Take care, my friend. Thank you. All right, thanks, man. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you and your friends don't miss any of the laughs. Episodes will be uploaded here at Timmy's Shorts daily until I run out. And be sure to check out the description below for links to connect with myself or my guests on social media, support us by buying merchandise, and also download the podcast version of this show. Until next time, remember, your brain... It's for thinking, not for eating. So just say no to zombies. My name's Timmy Boyle.